At a company as big as ours, uh, every now and then, someone comes in and asks, why are we using React Native? Why aren't we using this or that? And just to be clear, they weren't looking for a fight. They were just curious and about why we chose this tech. Uh, and what came out of these discussions were insights that I think some of us may be taking for granted, being in this field for so long. I know I have. Um, and uh, so I'm really grateful to be able to stand here today and share with you some of these insights, some of these uh, strategic, strategic reasons behind Microsoft's bet on React Native. Uh, and in particular, there are two topics I want to touch on. Uh, first, I will talk about how React Native's adaptability allows us to reach customers faster. And second, I will be going through the non-technical reasons uh, for why choosing React Native makes sense from a business perspective. And the goal is to leave you with a list of both technical and non-technical uh, points for a next tech discussion. My name is Tommy. Uh, you may have seen me around under the GitHub alias Tito64. I'm a principal software engineer at Microsoft, and I work on React Native developer experience. Let's talk about React Native's adaptability. And to do that, I want to start at the very, very high level and slowly dig down into the uh, details. At the very basic level, React Native is a piece of software, obviously, uh, that allows you to write JavaScript code to create and manipulate native elements. Of course, it's not as, uh, not as simple as just that. Uh, the JavaScript we write may consist of several parts, like the business logic, uh, some libraries, modules, and of course, the UI itself. And through this communication layer, uh, we are then able to create and manipulate native elements such as UI or modules like camera or Bluetooth. This communication layer is what makes React Native powerful, uh, allowing anyone to write JavaScript code and get an app with the same look and feel as the rest of the operating system, essentially lowering the barrier uh, to entry for getting your apps out there. It is this communication layer uh, that allows us to target both Android and iOS at the same time from a single code base. That, this means that most of the time, you can share a lot of the code you write between the platforms. It's like getting two apps for the price of one. In fact, this communication layer is what makes things interesting, because you can scale it out to additional platforms, platforms like Windows and Mac OS. And that's exactly what we did at Microsoft. React Native for Windows and Mac OS is used extensively in apps such as Xbox and Office, reaching millions of users daily. Of course, it's not just Microsoft. Uh, other companies have also added platforms of their own, such as Colslack's Vision OS and the React Native TV initiative backed by Amazon. There are probably more platforms out there that we don't know about. And I think this is a really great showing of React Native's adaptability. The concept of using JavaScript as a scripting layer for, for controlling native elements is simple and yet so powerful and easy to scale out. But there is another dimension to React Native's adaptability. This may come as a surprise to you, uh, but Microsoft isn't exactly a startup. We have lots and lots of existing apps. Some are older than most people in this room. And we also have web apps that mirror the native ones. And you can probably imagine that's a lot of features that you have to implement twice. It would be nice if we could share more code here. And with React Native, we can do just that. We can take an existing app, plug in React Native, and start reusing the JavaScript code. This is sometimes called a brownfield app, where a fully native app has some screens written with React Native. And Microsoft has lots of brownfield apps. Uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, even Windows, just to name a few. 
And what makes React Native ideal when you have lots of apps is the ability to extract common screens and functionalities into reusable components, allowing us to have a consistent experience between all apps across all platforms. And sharing code is something that we do a lot uh, at Microsoft. And if you want to learn more about how we or, uh, organize this poly monorepo environment, check out the talk we presented at r and uh, in 2021. We even implemented tools to help with developer experience, and they're all open source. If you're interested, check out React Native Test App and the RNX Kit, uh, both of which you can learn in our presentation at last year's RNEU. Of course, since it's all open source, you can also just check out the community modules that use them. All right, let's dive deeper. Going back to the communication layer again, one of the core pieces of this layer is the JavaScript engine. And today, the default engine is Hermes. It is optimized for app startup and general UI responsiveness, and it is what you should use for most scenarios. But if you need more raw performance, the communication layer is flexible enough so that you can swap out the JavaScript engine with something more performance focused, for instance, like V8. Or if your app has many independent screens, maybe built by different teams, uh, you could even sandbox them, both for security reasons and so that you can unload and unload them individually, uh, independent of each other. Now, most of the scenarios I have presented so far include both uh, UI and business logic. But sometimes there are no UI to share, just business logic. Um, for example, for scripting purposes or server-side compu computations. In this, in this case, it would be a waste of resources to have a full React Native instance running. Internally at Microsoft, we use a headless version of React Native. And this is a version of the runtime optimized for running only non-UI code. And of course, this code can be a reusable package that you can put into many other uh, apps as well. And these are just some of the scenarios we have achieved with React Native at Microsoft. So you might be wondering, what does an actual Microsoft app using React Native look like? Microsoft has many apps using React Native. The showcase on React Native's uh, website lists some of our mobile apps. But we have React Native experiences in a lot more apps than what's shown here. And we're shipping them, shipping them to customers on all platforms. Uh, and by all platforms, I mean Windows and Mac OS, in addition to iOS and Android. Some of our React Native experiences were written from scratch using React Native, such as Skype or the Xbox app, while others have become integral, integral parts of existing apps. And that's the beauty of it. There's no wrong or right way of using React Native. You get to choose what makes sense for your scenarios, and you can customize as much as you like. These are all valid React Native usages that we have employed in application applications used by millions daily. And this level of adaptability is what gives you an advantage, advantage in this fast evolving world of technology. But techno te technical reasons alone do not drive technology decisions. Behind technology decisions are also strategy, or as we call it at Microsoft, good strategic reason. And at Microsoft, we never let a good three-letter acronym get away. So we'll call this GSR for short. The first GSR is hireability. In the McKinsey Technology Trends Outlook of 2023, the, the lack of talent was identified as the top issue constraining company growth. Consistently across all surveys, JavaScript 
is at the top uh, of languages used across the industry for many years. And since, since React Native is based on JavaScript, it means that you can tap into the largest pool of talents available. Finding the right people is difficult uh, enough as it is, so having this large pool of talents really helps. The second GSR is that React Native is alive. What, what we mean by this is that it's constantly moving forward and being improved upon. In fact, there's a huge en uh, effort underway as we speak. You may have heard of it. The, the new architecture effort has been going on for years and is now finally in beta. What a tremendous effort it has been to do this while ensuring that breakages are kept to a minimum. The third GSR is cross-industry synergies. When I showed you the uh, showcase earlier, I didn't mention the fact that there are other companies involved in this space. Among them are Meta, obviously, Amazon, Shopify, and many, many more. The fact that we can reach out and cooperate with other companies like these on certain efforts is a big selling point with leaderships. And all of this is enabled by the fact that React Native is so flexible and because it is open source. And speaking of open source, the first use are, is that it's open source. But open source by itself isn't a valid reason. You can't just go to your boss and say, eh, because it's open source. What do we mean specifically by open source? For one, cost savings. Uh, a recent paper published by the Harvard Business School indicated that firms would spend 12.2 trillion US dollars, or three and a half times what they currently spend, if they need to pay in-house developers to write the software that they currently use for free. Being open source means that you retain control. At any point in time, you can click on this button here and fork the code when needed. And this button is often the first one you click on when you want to submit patches, but it's also useful for when you need to create an emergency patch for yourself. Uh, you can use it for when you need to make bigger changes, like when we created React Native Mac OS, or when the project owners decide to take the project in a direction that you don't agree with. Regla regardless of what you use it for, you're in full control. And with open source, you become part of a large and very active community. And since React Native is based on JavaScript, it comes with lots of resources and tooling made by not only the React community, but also the broader JavaScript community. And the best part is that you get to work with some of the most passionate and talented people out there. Just look at this beautiful crowd. And because it's, React Native is based on React. A lot of devs these days know React, making it easier for them to get into React Native. Uh, within a company, it really makes things easier because it, it allow, allows you to funnel your investment in the React ecosystem. And you get closer collaboration between web and native developers. For example, within Microsoft, we have a set of fluent UI controls for web. And since they're based on React, it has allowed our teams to work closer on the same set of controls for React Native. And speaking of web, the possibility of using web code directly. We often see that new experiences are developed for web first, and with native lagging behind because you have to rewrite the UI uh, specifically for React Native. And while you're able to share the business logic, you still have to write your UI code twice. And given that it's all based on React anyway, why can't we just use the web code in a React Native app? And this is a question that Meta, Microsoft, and other community partners have been thinking about for a while, and in fact, 
we have RFCs and implementations out there. Uh, Meta recently published React Strict DOM. Uh, and there's the web API uh, for React Native BIOS. And for web APIs in particular, we currently have two modules implemented for battery status and local storage for all platforms. And these efforts are both being actively worked on. This is an example of a React Native app rendering a Fluent UI button using all web code. So I, I didn't dare uh, defy the demo goblins today, but this is something that you can check out and run for yourself. Of course, it's all experimental at this point, uh, but really, we really think this will be the next big thing in the React Native space. All right, I've said a lot of things. So before we finish off, let's recap. React Native is incredibly adaptable. With a single code base, you can target multiple platforms. You can put it in your existing apps, or you can replace bits and pieces of it to fit your needs. From a, from a business perspective, it increases the pool of talents you can hire. And the fact that it's open source means that you can reduce costs, benefit from a vibrant ecosystem full of resources and tooling, and create synergies between web and native developers within the, companies, uh, within the company and outside the company with other companies. Of course, it's, all, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Uh, there are trade-offs, and you, you need to think about what's more important for your scenarios. Thanks for listening. Uh, I hope that was useful for you. <laughs> uh, please check out our blog and follow us on Twitter. And finally, I just wanted to give a special thanks to Lorenzo and Alex. They prepared most of the talk so that I can stand here and take all the credit. <laughs>